Bridgeport, Connecticut is going to be installing slot machines, ladies and gentlemen, and video poker and things like that, so that all the poor people, because Bridgeport is certainly not an affluent city, uh, can, can go into further into poverty and have more troubles in their families and break more homes and have uh, more regarding on uh, more relying on these social programs that are destroying this country. We have a hundred million people on some type of government program. We have over a hundred million people, ninety million people out of work. And there's three hundred million people. I mean this country is falling apart. And everyone that has a job, they think everything's okay. Just because you have a job and, and nothing's really changed in your life, in your world, don't think that that's not going to come crashing down one day real hard. Because it is. On all of us. Uh, this economic situation that we're in is very precarious, ladies and gentlemen. Um, most of all, the government spending goes towards welfare programs and, and Social Security and, and all of these other uh, entitlement programs and they can't sustain them. But yet, through the social control of the media, the mass-controlled media, the mainstream media, which is controlled by six corporations, and for the last 70 years, the Department of uh, Education, excuse me, the last the Department of Education was, was put into place in 1979, but even before that, the tax-exempt foundations the Carnegie Endowment for Peace, the Rockefeller Foundation, funded education. And this leftist viewpoint. And people like Bill Ayers are now teaching kids about communism and how to be a good communist in our schools, in our colleges, at Chicago University. And that's where the Marxist Obama taught. Now this is a man, Bill Ayers, who blew up the Pentagon, the Capitol, post office, he tried to kill a judge. And he's hoisted up as a, as a political, uh, a, a good person. This happened in Nazi Germany. These guys were thugs. Goering, Goebbels, they were thugs. They were criminals. And Hitler put them, under, put them into power. It's, seem, it's, it's scarily similar to Nazi Germany, what's going on in this country, ladies and gentlemen. And this is only the beginning. Um, the revenues are required, so they put in all the vices. So pretty soon it's going to be, everything is going to go. Drugs are going to be legal, and, thin, and, and again, you know, as far as, um, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, speculation on this as to what's going to happen. We have uh, a society that's accepting sex is okay, just use a condom. And they're teaching it in schools. We have an education system that has dumbed down at least three grades so far from when I went to school. And we have a society that embraces evil. And it's okay, you know, all these rock stars and all the people going with the horns. And this, all of a sudden this became trendy. Not realizing this is Satanism, ladies and gentlemen. There truly is Luciferians that study and worship the mystery of religions of Babylon. They worship gods like Molech and Isis and Osiris. Osiris is Lucifer. And the son of the morning star. And Osiris is the phallus and Isis is the ovum and that's why we have in St. Peter's Square an ovum that's the indicativeness of Isis and then we have a phallus an obelisk in St. Peter's Square which is Osiris and interestingly enough they're in London and in New York in Paris and all the major cities of the world Constructed by who? The Freemasons. The world is not as it seems. I'm concerned for this generation coming up, my son's generation. Fortunately, I, and I've educated him well, he's very smart, and he knows about the, the troubles in the world. But the majority of people are just more interested in, you know, uh, keeping their heads in the sand, you know do their sports, you know, watch their movies, play with their their uh, video games that are showing all this violence and murder and we're getting inundated with death and blood and Satan. I mean, God, Satan is everywhere, isn't it? I mean, they make movies about it constantly. Oh, they're horror movies. Well, it's deeper than that, ladies and gentlemen. F. Scott Fitzgerald once said to Ernest Hemingway, the rich are different than us. 
and which Hemingway replied, um, of course they're different than us, they have more money than we do. And then F. Scott Fitzgerald, who of course wrote The Great Gatsby, said, no, it's something deeper than that. And it is deeper than that. It's a spider web of evil that all meets in the middle, and it's a bottomless pit. And the more you dig, the more you uncover, the more the pieces seem to fit. And the more the pieces fit, the clearer your understanding is to what is going on here and how the New World Order, a bipartisan, Masonic goal, is being worked to fruition right before our very eyes, hidden in plain sight with their monuments and their symbols and their uh, use of propaganda in the movies and the subliminals. It's real, ladies and gentlemen. But don't believe me. Find your own truth. There is only one truth. Seek and you'll find it. And this present window of opportunity during which a truly peaceful and interdependent world order might be built will not be here for open for too long. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. We'll tell you any shit you want to hear. We do it in illusions, man. None of it is true. But you people sit there day after day, night after night, all ages, colors, creeds. We're all you know. You're beginning to believe the illusions we're spinning here. You're beginning to think that the tube is reality and that your own lives are unreal. You do whatever the tube tells you. You dress like a tube. You eat like a tube. You raise your children like a tube. You even think like a tube. This is mass madness, you maniac. In God's name, you people are the real thing. We are the illusion. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. It's the need for a new world order, but it has different characteristics in different parts of the world. And the president outlined his vision of a new world order in which the U.S. would participate fully, we'll tell you one rooted on four basic principles. Non-proliferation of disarmament. None of it is true. The promotion of peace and security. The preservation of our planet and a global economy that advances opportunity for all people. The affirmative task we have now is uh, is to actually um, uh, create uh, uh, a new world order. A world in which there is a very real prospect of a new world order. It's about the future of Europe and a new world order. After 1989, President Bush kept saying, and it was a that I also used myself, that we needed if a new like world order. If you plan, you can keep your plan. 